In this video, we are going to continue the discussions of the topic 1.5 combining functions. In the previous video, we have mentioned how to obtain new functions by carrying out uh, additions, subtractions, multiplication, or divisions on two different functions to give you a new functions. So these operations to arrive at a new function are rather straightforward. There is another method of getting a new function by using two different functions of uh, f and g. So this is what we call a composition of function. The composition of function is defined as basically the function of another function and it's written as is shown on the screen so here imagine you are given a function f of x defined on some domain and also another function g g of x define for some domain of g. You can form a composition function f composed of g by slotting in the values of the function evaluated at the values of x into the function of f. So this is pronounced as f composed with g. Sometimes I just call it f composed with g function. You can also uh, form a different composition by swapping the position of uh, g and f to obtain a, another composition function, g composed with f function, which is defined by slotting in the values of the function evaluated at x into the expression of g. Graphically, you can imagine this to be a two-step process. And this graph or this picture is a representation of the composite function denoted by f composed with g. For this particular example, in order to obtain the function f composed with g, first you start off with some variable x, slot into the function g to obtain the output. So the values of gx is then fit into the function of f to give you the composite function. So it's a kind of two-step procedure, okay? You start off with x, then you obtain the values of the function g, then you in turn put the function g as an input to the function f to give you a new value. You can also imagine that the resultant, uh, the resulting effects of putting x into g, g into f to give you f composed with g as the product or the action of another single function called f composed of g. So this f composed of g function could be uh, thought of as the net effects of the two-step procedure. So f composed of g is sort of an, a, a net function, a net function which summarizes the two-step procedure of x going into g and g goes into f. The specific example is like this. So if you have a function of fx equals to square root of x and gx equals to x plus 1, then you can compose f uh, composed with g, g composed with f, f composed with f, g composed with g. So it's very easy to uh, imagine or to understand this uh, simple composition function. So here, uh, fx is square root of x, g is just x plus 1. So you can write down the expression of f composed with g function 
simply by understanding that this composition is obtained by first evaluating the function of g at x. So you need to evaluate the function of g of x first. Then the values of g of x is then slot in as the input to the function f. So here, you have to first evaluate what is the function of g of x first. So this is the result when you slot in x into g. Right? So g is the function that process uh, x into x plus 1. So x plus 1 here is the result of the function g of x. Then the compositions of f composed with g is then to slot in the whole argument of x plus 1 into the function of x. So function of x, which is defined to be square root of x, that means whatever thing that you put into the function, you take the square root of it. So here what goes into the functions is x plus 1. So you just take the square root of x plus 1. So that would be the expression for the composite function of f composed of g. So in this very particular example, given the uh, function f and g, the domain of the functions is uh, from 0 to infinity, including 0. The domain of g is for all values of real number. Then you can then answer the questions of what is the domains of f composed of g. So the answer to answer the domains for the new function f composed of g could be easily uh, write down by referring to the expressions of this. So naively, uh, it just simply means that uh, x plus 1 has to be larger or equals to 0 because the square root must be positive. If it is to be defined, so based on this very simple expression, then you know that the functions of f composed of g is defined for all values of x larger than 1. So if you represent these situations on a new axis, then this is a value of minus 1, then x larger than 1 can be represented by a dot pointing to the right. So this arrow means all the values of x lying here are the domains of the functions of uh, f composed of g. So this is expressed as just minus 1 to infinity. Okay, So that is for the case of um, f composed of g. It's very simple and straightforward. So this is what we have just reproduced. Then you can then uh, work up for figure out for yourself g composed with f. So here uh, g composed with f, the functions is obtained by slotting in the expression of f of x into the function of g. Okay, so g as uh, written down here is x plus 1. So whatever that goes into g, you just add that whatever with 1. So that is how the function of g is defined. It adds to 1 to whatever that goes into the, the, the arguments of the function g. And then you can then write down the expression of f, which is just the square root of x. So that is the expression for the composite function of f composed of g. So the domain of g composed of f is trivially um, understood to be just the values of all positive number in real uh, in the real axis. So that is the answer for g composed of f. So you can do the same thing for f composed of f and g composed of g. So by definitions, you can derive the expression for g composed with g, f composed with f by slotting in the expression of f into the, the definition of f. 
Uh, so you follow the uh, statements here, then you'll be able to realize that the expression for the composite function of f composed of f is just x raised to the power of one fourth, which is the fourth root of the uh, variable x. So as I mentioned, all the even roots of an power function is only defined for a positive number. So that is the domain for the composite function of f composed of f. So g composed of g uh, turns out to give an expression of x plus 2. And the domain of it is from minus infinity to infinity. So the conclusion for this slide is that we have defined uh, what is the composite functions. And these are the example of uh, of building the composite function based on a function f and g. So you also see how you can derive the domain of the composite functions formed by using f and g. Now, the important point that you need to realize is that the, um, the, the composite function is a two-step procedure. You have to first define the function g Well, you just have to first obtain the values of the function g and x first. Then only you slot in the values of g of x into the function of f. So uh, then only you can obtain the composite function of f composed of g. Now this looks like a repetition of what I say, but there is a catch in the process. Now it is possible that for some values of x that goes into the g, uh, but g cannot process the values of x. For example, if g is the square root of x, so if you slot in the values of x, uh, which is negative, then the process in the first steps in the composite function uh, operation will be halted the values of gx could not be obtained if you were to fit in the function of g with a negative values of x. So if this step is not uh, be able to process, then no values of gx will be created and you would not be able to complete the second steps of producing the values of f evaluated at g of x because g of x is not uh, defined. Now, these situations uh, will be revealed in this particular example. Okay, so let's look at example two. We have two different functions, g and f. Let us try to uh, look at the composite function of g and f. So let us look at the composite function of f composed with g first. So here I have the function of g which is 1 minus x squared and then I have fx which is equal to square root of x. Okay, then uh, let's just look at how we obtain the composite function of f composed with g. Right, so this is the expression of g to be placed inside the expression of the function of f. Now, to make the uh, process of writing down the expression of this composite function more explicitly, I would write it in the following manner. That is, the function of f is the square root of g of x. Okay, then only you slot in the expression of g. So, this is the situation. Now, when you look at these expressions, you have to understand that the expression for f composed of g has to be calculated first for the values of g of x. Only then you take the square root. Right? So you have to be very clear what is the operation to be taken first before the next. So here you have to take the function of g first before you take the function of x. So once a x is slot into the operation for the composite function f composed with g, you first have to calculate what is the g of x's. That is, you have to calculate 
what is the values of 1 minus x square first before you take the square root. Okay, this is a very important uh, point to remember. So there's not much complication for these composite functions. Uh, it, it is the expression of 1 minus x squared. Okay. So here the domain of the function is uh, defined for all values of x that is lying between minus 1 and 1. And this is amount to say that x modulus is less or equals to 1. Okay, so there are two ways of writing down the domains of the composite function. You write, either write it in this way or you write it in this way. Uh, it, it's, it's okay. Or you can write it as minus 1 to 1. Okay, so these are all three equivalent ways of expressing the domains of the function. So the expression for the uh, function f composed of g is this. Then we ask the next question. Is the composition function f composed of g the same as the composition of g with f? So obviously, well, let me write it again, uh, wrap it off. Okay, so g composed of f. So before we write down what is the expression for g composed of f, you should understand that in general, these two composition would not be the same. So f composed with g and g composed with f would give you different behavior, different function in general. So this is just the uh, function of g um, operated on the expressions of function f and the function of g is just 1 minus x squared so this is just equal to 1 minus whatever thing that will go into the g so what goes into the g is the function f so this is the expression that i first write down then when you do that, it's understood that in order to calculate the values of g composed of f and x, you first have to calculate the values of f of x first before you calculate the function of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so let me try to continue writing this. So this would be 1 minus uh square root of x this is the expression of the function f and then you have n squared okay so i have um okay so that is expression for g composed with f now one thing that i have to remind you this is you would like to think that this is equal to one minus x okay so what i'm saying here is that you don't do that because uh, you can uh, equate 1 minus square of square root of x to be 1 minus x only if x is positive, right? If x is not equals to positive, say if x is negative, this is undefined, right? So you can't define the square root of x if x is negative. So these statements is not equal to this for all values of x, but only for x that is uh, larger or equals to zero. Okay, so now we have a situations of g composed of f, which is expressed as this function. Okay, so then you ask the questions, what is the domain of G composed with F? So the answer is that this expression is given by this, and this function is only defined for X that is lying on the real number that is positive. So this is then equals to the values of real number now this is the correct answer however if you if you uh what to call uh if 
few uh, pandai pandai ya write this as one minus x then this expression may suggest that the domain is defined for all values of x in real space whereas this is not true because you have to evaluate the square root of x first before you can evaluate the function of g later okay so the function of f it is not defined in the first stage then you would not be able to slot the result of the function of f into the function of g in the second stage so to so bear that in mind not to simply uh, make any simplifications if you are not sure what is happening you should just stop the calculation at this point and don't carry forwards into here because if you carry this and equate this with this um, you may uh, make some mistakes to think that it is defined for all values of x it is not okay it is only defined if x is positive so with this understanding we then be able to obtain the domain of the function of g composed of f more generally the uh, if you are given a function g and a function of f the domain of the composite function is actually derived by referring to this kind of constructions uh, which says that the domain of the composite function is the interval in x that corresponds to the intersection between the range of f and the domain of g okay so that finished up the discussions on the composite function